Hello everyone and welcome to a new video from your Overwatch. I'm Eddie the Chump and today we're going to be taking a look at an absolutely incredible hero design concept by an artist called Ben Lowe. I'm going to put a link to his page in the description box below. I highly recommend you check it out. He has a lot of pro quality work there, not just this one. Now the basic premise of this hero is that she is a Mongolian eagle huntress named Cthulhuan, whose entire family was wiped out by Omnix following the last Omnic war. Her eagle, Sarnai, was badly injured in an attack and it was only with the help of Dr. Ziegler, or Mercy as we know her, that the eagle survived. Using the technology that also saved Genji, Mercy built new mechanical wings for Sarnai. Indeed, her new wings very closely resemble Mercy's own, which is a really nice visual touch from Ben. So lore-wise, Cthulhuan was so grateful, she decided to travel the world as Mercy's apprentice, hoping to pay her back for this great kindness. Now, if you've never seen an eagle hunter in action, and yes, they are real, you need to Google it pronto. Using their feathered friends, they can take down much larger prey than the eagle themselves, and the bond they form with their animals is incredibly strong, only broken when they release the eagle after years of service to return to the wild and raise young for themselves. I think as a character, Cthulhuan has amazing appeal and could fit really well in the hopeful version of the future Overwatch portrays. Plus, let's be real, what's cooler than a cyber eagle? Nothing. That's right. It's a testament to Ben Lowe's skill as a concept artist that he also included some draft abilities that Cthulhuan and Sarnai could have, and not only that, he also included some movement and visual design studies of these abilities in action. I'll be putting those up on screen as I talk about them so you can see. Now I hope you don't mind Ben, but I'll also be adding my own ideas in at the same time when I see fit. So without further ado, let's explore how Cthulhuan would play. Dual health bars. So the first thing I thought about when I saw this design was, should Cthulhuan and Sarnai have separate health meters, or should it only be Cthulhuan's health that is counted? There isn't a dual nature hero like this in Overwatch right now, and with a little thought, one could easily make it workable. Because Sarnai would count as a castable abilities, enemies should should have some capacity to interact with it. One of the only exceptions currently is Sombra's Translocator, but that doesn't directly affect anyone but her, so it kind of makes sense. If Sarnai is going to come and attack you, you should be able to do something about it. That means, and I know this is sad, but enemies should be able to shoot at Sarnai. But don't worry, my idea for this is, if you shoot Sarnai while she is attacking you or a teammate, she just flies miles into the air and returns to Cthulhuan on a prolonged cooldown. That way there's also a risk for a bad use of her for the casting player. Maybe she has 140 shields and no health. I don't think being able to actually kill her is what we want. But if you hit a crispy headshot with McCree, that should be enough to make her go away. Now for Cthulhuan, I think 200 HP is good enough. She's basically going to be offering damage and stun value to your team. I'll talk about that stun later. So in fairness, she should be fairly squishy, and I don't think it needs to be more complicated than that. Now onto the serious stuff. Sidestep passive. Ben conceived of giving Cthulhuan some very interesting mobility options, and what they do depends on whether or not Sarnai is with you at any particular moment. If Sarnai is on your arm, then using spacebar mid-jump would give you access to flight for a short period of time, allowing you to traverse gaps or long distances from high ground. Think of it like Mercy's Angelic Descent, except with more airtime and controllability. One idea I had was that you could adapt that a little bit and have it so that it had some good lift when first pressed, so Cthulhuan could go from the floor to, say, a single-story height ledge. I don't think that would be too outrageous. She's supposed to be a huntress. Getting to favourable positions is part of the job. If if Sarnai is not with you, then pressing spacebar mid-jump would give you a small sidestep. Now that sounds quite similar to Hanzo's lunge, but I tone it down a little bit from that. I kind of like the idea of Cthulhuan's vulnerability changing depending on where her eagle is. There's an ability management and risk reward factor to it then. Quick shots. So for Cthulhuan's weapon, Ben imagined a picture of a crossbow and described it as an automatic. Now I agree that a crossbow is fitting for her, but having it be fully auto doesn't really work for me. Maybe if it was wrist mounted and it auto reloaded in a small clip, kind of like Genji's shurikens, then it might work better. In law terms, she'd need to have at least one arm free at all times for Sarnai, so having it fire from her wrist on her other free arm fits quite nicely. It would obviously have to be a projectile, but I'd make it fire faster, straighter, and do way less damage than Hanzo's bow. If there's six bolts in a clip, I'd make it do similar damage to Zen's orbs, because a lot of her damage and value is going to come from Sarnai, and this weapon is at least in my imagining a backup to protect herself while her eagle does work. Cluster Grenade. 
For her E ability, Ben has given her what he calls cluster grenades. Throw one projectile, kind of like Anna's, and then it breaks up into smaller ones dealing a burst of damage, maybe similar in scale to Soldier's Helix. Now this is the only part of Ben's excellent design that I'd completely rework. I think if she's going to have a grenade, it should be based around trapping and not damage. Now the way I imagined this is that when Cthulhu throws her grenade, it still splits off into three others, but they each spread a little fire across the floor, creating a triangle where their angles meet. You could have the radius be quite large, a target wouldn't be forced to stand still within that triangle, but they'd be controlled into a certain area which your team could then close the net around. Obstensively, if you didn't walk into the flames, the grenade would do nothing to you, but if you did, it should hurt enough to be a high risk escape. This flame trap I like more than giving her raw burst damage. Swift Strike So Ben conceived of Sarnai being used to attack a certain area with the ability to recall her being attached to the same button. I really really like that, but instead of a certain area, I'd have Sarnai attack a specific target. Now remember what I said about being able to shoot Sarnai? Well, what I thought of next is why that is necessary. In my mind, Sarnai should attack and latch onto a single enemy like a real eagle does, and she should do damage over time until either she eliminates her prey or is shot enough to retreat. Think the Talon Assassin from the Archives event, but with some key differences. One, much lower health as we've already talked about, and two, instead of completely locking a target down in place where they can't do anything, how about Sarnai just slows a target down instead? So if you're the player attacked, you move slower, but you can fire back and your teammates can shoot the eagle as well. If you manage to do enough damage before she's recalled, remember, Sarnai will be on a much longer cooldown for Cthulhu as well. So it's not a stun in the traditional sense, but it does have CC properties, and it has outplay potential for both the user and the target. Fire Storm. For Cthulhu's ultimate, Ben has drawn her sending Sarnai into the air, along with the description of using her to unleash a firestorm into a certain area, and he's also added the effect that firestorm should be extra effective against armor. Now that aspect I really like, and with how I reimagined the cluster grenades into fire traps, this could make a lot of sense. Maybe Cthulhu gives Sarnai a whole bunch of grenades as part of the ultimate animation, and that's what she drops. Now because you'd want to be able to designate where the firestorm actually landed, I think you could easily make it so that for this ult, you actually take take control of Sarnai and pick out the area, kind of like Doomfist Meteor Strike. How cool would that be? Again, for the counterplay, I'd have it so that the enemies can shoot Sarnai when she's coming to drop the Firestorm, and if you do enough damage, she gets freaked out and just flies into the air, dropping the grenades at random, making their effectiveness much less potent. Now there's one final question to answer. What if Cthulhu gets eliminated while Sarnai is out attacking something? Well, I'd have that be an instant decast of her attack. If you eliminated Cthulhu, Sarnai would immediately fly back to spawn to regroup with her master, ending any threat she posed. I think that's only fair. And that's about all that I could think of. I really think Benlo has created one of the best hero concepts I've seen thus far, and that's why it fired off my imagination so vibrantly. Again, please do go check out his work in the description box below. It is really stunning. Let me know in the comments what you thought about this concept and the additions I suggested for it. I'd love to read what you guys have to say. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please don't forget to leave a rating. If you never want to miss another video of ours again, please Please click the bell icon next to the subscribe button on our channel to join the notification squad. You'll be in great company. And finally, please follow the your Overwatch Twitter. It's where you can find updates about new videos and other cool stuff. I've been Eddie the Chump, and until next time.